You're watching Euronews Now. I'm Rahm Zadi. Here's a look at Tuesday's top stories. Extreme heat chaos as temperatures soar, hospitals and transportation comes under pressure as infrastructure buckles in the heat. Tens of thousands are forced to flee their homes as scorching temperatures fuel wildfires across Spain, Portugal and France. And plugging the gap, the race to secure alternative energy supplies continues as the EU looks to Egypt, Algeria and Azerbaijan to replace Russian gas. People tried to stay cool while out and about as temperatures reached at least 36 degrees in London, when many of the usually lush green parks have turned brown after weeks of high temperatures. If Monday's soaring temperatures even caused the runway at Luton Airport to melt, then Tuesday could be worse. Up to 41 degrees is forecast in some places. That's considered dangerously high for the UK, and the Public Health Service is already under pressure. Is that we should start thinking how to adapt with this virus, because this will happen more often now. Um, as we see that if the, you know, including this, if the last five months highest day temperatures have been happening within the last 10 years, then this is the sign there's going to be more. This is a trend. It's going to be more and more frequent. In Brest in northern France, record-breaking temperatures have forced many people to stay at home. But there are ways to cool off if you're brave enough to wander outside. <laughs> Global warning and all that. Usually breast is 70% humidity and here we have broken all heat records. We have to ask ourselves some serious questions. Near the Eiffel Tower in Paris, tourists sought ways to keep cool in the blistering heat. Staying hydrated is the advice to everyone with no exceptions. The blanket of hot air covering much of Europe should continue in the next few days. Firefighters in southwestern France are battling to contain a series of wildfires on an unprecedented scale. 15,000 hectares had already burned as of Monday in France's Gironde department. The surface of devastation represents an area of 150 square kilometers, as large as Paris and its inner suburbs. 32,000 people have had to be evacuated. The heat has been described as apocalyptic. Those battling the flames are fighting fire with fire. We burned an area in a planned, chosen and limited way, an area that is destined to burn. But burning it before the main fire arrives allows us to avoid the fire going further and in particular jumping on the large area of mountains that we have just behind us. In Spain, at least 20 blazes are burning out of control. The flames have destroyed homes and crops and forced thousands of people to seek emergency shelter. In Catalonia, locals took what they could as the flames came near. I don't know what condition my house is in. I think it's burned from what I've been told, but I can't say how seriously. I saw a video that a neighbor sent me and it looks burnt. It started to get stronger and stronger. At 5 p.m. we were caught by the flames and we had to run. We took the four puppies that we have and that's it. The chickens stayed, our 15 kittens too. This year's wildfires are already some of the worst in memory and they're not yet under control. The wind isn't helping, leaving firefighters unable to see which direction the flames will take. Firefighters in France's southwest are in a race against time in the sweltering heat to try and contain wildfires carving up a blazing path of destruction. As they battle and waterbomb vast areas from the skies, let's bring in our correspondent on the ground, Annelise Borges. Um, Annelise, so what's the latest then? Are these firefighters able to get those fires under control? Not yet, at least uh, according to local authorities, the last few hours have been extremely difficult for the more than 2,000 firefighters that have been deployed here to the Gironde region in the southwest of France. They've been trying to put down this fire for a week now, and I don't know if you can tell, uh, but the clouds around me and the fog is, is nothing to do with the weather. This is not a sign of rain to come. This 
is a result of those fires. This is smoke and you can smell the fire from this city. Uh, there I am, the city of Langon. This was not the case yesterday. The skies were clear uh, and you could definitely not smell the fire. The authorities have also been saying that the last few hours have been difficult because strong winds have been pushing the fire towards different directions and firefighters have had to reposition multiple times. We also understand that some infrastructure has been damaged that had not been the case until now, but so far there's been no victims. Authorities have also explained that they've been trying different techniques to try and put out the fire, including cutting trees to prevent the fire from spreading closer to villages. And I spoke to a local resident who is a representative of one association that protects the forest land here in the Gironde, the biggest forest land in the whole of France. And this is what he had to say about the cutting down of trees. We cut trees to prevent the forest from burning. It's a defense zone where we take out the flammable material. It also allows us to enter the uplands. But yes, if the wind changes directions, the fire can spread differently. The situation is really not good. So with the elements against them, uh, the situation is really not good, according to that representative of that association. Uh, it's either the fire or this technique of cutting down trees that is going to consume uh, quite a lot of uh, land here. Uh, authorities have also said that more than 20, almost 20,000 hectares have already been burned this week alone. Egypt says it stands ready to play whatever role it can in helping ease the current Europe gas crisis. Welcome news to German Chancellor Olaf Scholz as he played host to President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. I confirmed to the Chancellor that Egypt is ready for partnership and with Germany in the energy sector. This concerns the export of natural gas and hydrogen, wind and solar energy. As far as the supply of gas and prospectively also hydrogen is concerned, it has to fit well into the very long industrial relationship that Germany and Egypt have had with each other. Schultz and other European leaders are ramping up their push to secure alternative energy supplies as fears escalate of a complete natural gas cutoff by Russia. On Monday, EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen signed a memorandum of understanding with Azerbaijan to double gas imports from the energy-rich Caspian nation to Europe. And Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi has been to Algeria to sign, among other documents, an energy deal to boost gas supplies. Since the beginning of the year, 13.9 billion cubic meters of gas has been delivered by Algeria to Italy and it plans to supply an additional 6 billion by the end of 2022. Last year, Russia supplied about 40% of Europe's natural gas, but its war in Ukraine and Moscow's drawdown of natural gas flows to a dozen EU countries that have triggered soaring energy prices, inflation, and a growing fear of how the bloc will power industry and heat homes this winter. Australia's 2021 State of the Environment report is out and its findings are grim. It says the country's environment is poor and deteriorating due to climate change and human activity. And the situation may be even worse once the consequences of recent environmental catastrophes are better known. The bushfires of 2019 and 2020 are still being felt today. Those bushfires were an ecological bomb ripping through southeastern Australia. They killed or displaced up to three billion creatures. They burnt over 80% of the Greater Blue Mountains area, almost 60% of our Gondwana rainforests and more than 40% of the Stirling Range National Park. And they tipped clouds of sediment and ash into our waterways, leading to mass marine deaths. 
According to the report, Australia has lost more mammal species than any other continent in the world. Over 100 animals have been declared extinct or extinct in the wild. A primary reason is habitat destruction, caused often by natural catastrophes such as flooding and fires. The five-year report is putting pressure on the government to promise new laws and enforce them. We'll take a short break here, but do check out all of our top stories on euronews.com.